Hello and welcome to the State of the Fleet Industry, a weekly video series produced by Automotive Fleet Magazine and sponsored by Enterprise Fleet Management. My name is Mike Antich, I'm the editor of Automotive Fleet, and today I'd like to examine what's occurring in the fleet industry for the week of December 7th, 2020. And the big news occurred last week with the announcement of the sale of Donlin by Hertz Global Holdings to Athene Holding Limited, which is a financial services company and one of the leading provider of annuities in the U.S. And Athene's primary business is retirement savings services, um, such as issuing, reissuing, and acquiring retirement savings products. So this gives Donlin a deep pocket parent company that indicated at the time of the acquisition announcement that is prepared to provide incremental capital of $2 billion for additional growth and technology investment in the Donlin fleet management business. The other big news that occurred last week was the release of November fleet sales data. Um, Industry-wide commercial fleet sales were down 12% in November compared to same time last year as management continues to take that wait and see approach uh, as to how the pandemic is going to be playing out. Uh, however, this decline in commercial fleet sales was not experienced by all auto manufacturers and several OEMs actually experienced growth in their commercial fleet sales for the month of November compared to what they had same time last year. But there is a certain seasonality or cyclicality uh, to the fleet industry. So for example, the traditional time period for contract negotiations for upcoming model year orders typically occurs in that March to May time frame. So what happened this year in the March to May time frame? We had an economic shutdown. All of the factories in North America temporarily ceased production. Uh, employees were either furloughed, uh, laid off, or requested to work from home. And altogether that ended up delaying the negotiation process industry-wide for new model orders. And anecdotally, the feeling is that probably delayed uh, deliveries by a quarter or two quarters and the anticipation is that we should start seeing that uptick in uh, new fleet deliveries as we get into the 2021 calendar year. And we're seeing this anecdotally, you know, fleet orders for companies uh, that are providing essential services, they continue to remain steady and because of these work from home policies, telecommunication fleets have been um, uh, ordering strongly for uh, replacement vehicles and plus we've seen the surge in e-commerce and, and the home delivery of online purchases and that's continuing to have strong demand for full-size especially high roof cargo vans and that's resulting in longer lead time for these vehicles and plus now we're starting to enter the peak period of uh, uh, e-commerce and online sales this period from Thanksgiving uh, through the turn of the year, which is putting even greater demand for these vehicles. Another positive uh, aspect has been uh, in the conversion of self-managed fleets to managed fleets, and we've seen this especially in that smaller fleet marketplace. You know, as business owners of these businesses, uh, you know, struggle to try to survive in the COVID environment, you know, many of them now are more favorably disposed to turning over the management of their company vehicles to a fleet management company, and we've actually seen growth in that area. Uh, other areas where we've seen growth has been with the commercial fleet orders for full-size pickups. Those continue to be strong. As I've mentioned, full-size vans uh, are strong. In fact, any type of vocational vehicle is um, in strong demand, and there is long lead time for those, uh, for those units. Currently, order to delivery times have been uh, improved where, uh, in comparison to where they were during the 2020 model year, but some upfitters are still continuing to experience labor shortages and part shortages, which is lengthening um, order delivery times for some upfitted units. But the positives are fuel prices continue to remain lower than what they were in 2019, interest rates are still stable and residual value for used vehicles while they've softened to seasonal norms continue to be a bit stronger than what they were in 2019 and we're seeing this ongoing strong resale values for full-size pickups, uh, cargo vans 
in any type of vocational vehicle. And there are these unknowns that are continuing. There's been a lot of discussion about a second stimulus bill that's yet to materialize. Um, but we do know from past experience that once the stimulus monies are distributed um, uh, to the population as a whole, many people use those uh, dollars as a down payment for used vehicles. And the other big unknown is the rollout of the approved vaccines. Um, and and the, we're going to get an announcement on that this Thursday, December 10th. It'll be a detailed press conference explaining how the vaccine is going to be rolled out nationwide. Um, and the plan is to distribute 20, 000, 20 million vaccinations in the month of December, an additional 20 million in the month of January, and an additional 25 million in the month of February. And that's with two vaccines. We still have um, vaccines that are pending from AstraZeneca and Johnson & Johnson. So the hope is that this distribution occurs expeditiously and uh, is done without any sort of major hiccups so we can begin getting this country back to business as usual. So with that, that concludes my State of the Industry presentation for the week of December 7th, and I'd like to thank you for listening.